Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle aka Stitcherista here on YouTube and in today's video I am going to show you how I kit up a counted canvas piece and show you some of the tools that I use. I may even do a stitch or two but I am not sure. I just really want to show you how I get everything ready to stitch and then how I'm going to actually approach this pattern because it's going to be approached a little bit different than how she does it in the pattern. Remember, you can do it in any order you want. Do you know what I mean? And if you watched my video where I unboxed this, I was missing one of the silks. I had emailed her, she wrote me back today and said, She's so sorry, she's gonna put the skein in the mail right now, so not a problem, I will have everything. Okay, first thing is getting the canvas onto the stretcher bars. So here are the mini stretcher bars. They come in a whole bunch of different sizes. What I needed for this one was 12 by 12. The mini stretcher bars I like very much because they're only half an inch thick and they're much lighter than the regular standard stretcher bars, which are three quarters of an inch thick. And because you need a square, you need four pieces. Each, you have to buy two of these, like two come in here, two come in here. So we are going to open this up. I hope you all are having a good day. It's been a long time since I've done a counted canvas piece, so bear with me if this is not exactly perfect none of my tutorials are perfect and I pride myself on that because I like to show how a normal person has does something things happen mistakes happen like I said it's been a long time since I've done a counted canvas piece but I've been wanting to do another one they have such gorgeous patterns out there and someone had asked me isn't counted canvas needlepoint? It is. However, here is the difference for me. In regular needlepoint, in my opinion, what they call needlepoint, you are purchasing a hand-painted canvas with a design already painted on it, and you're adding stitches to it to illustrate the canvas. Versus, counted canvas which is these this pattern that I have you are essentially starting with a blank canvas and you're adding stitches to it by counting that's where the counted part comes in I do consider them both to be needlepoint because they use the same type of stitches while in cross stitch there's basically back stitch and X in needlepoint there are many many different types of stitches and both counted canvas and needlepoint use the same. So I hope that makes sense. It's the best way that I can explain it. Wow, I'm having so much trouble getting these open. What the actual hell? It's because the this thing is like taped to it and I don't know why. Why does this have to be difficult? And I didn't want to unwrap it before I wanted to show you how it comes packaged, basically. Okay, then how you fit these together is like this. See how? Now, there are some times where I have to like press this up against a wall to get it exactly flush because you want it perfectly flush and even because otherwise it won't be a 12 by 12 or whatever size you're getting. Do you know what I mean? And what's nice about this, using these mini stretcher bars, is this should fit in my Velky Pataki stand. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna see how this is not exactly all pushed in there. I'm gonna push this on the floor because they do, um, if you put your body weight on it and push it into the floor, they come together pretty nice. I'm getting it. 
And I, what I do is I will go around each corner and push it onto the floor. I have to do it a little bit more. This one's not cooperating. You could even take a rubber mallet and like bang them together because I think what happens is this is pretty cheap wood. Like this one's really bent. I'm gonna hope the canvas is still gonna fit on it. So what you should wind up with is a square, obviously. And it's not always like 12 by 12. Most of the time they are, they make them eight by eight, 14 by 14. Now we need to get the canvas onto this. Remember, you have your canvas. I need to pull out the tag. Now, there are different ways to do this. My way is not the only way. Many people will say you need to put a tack in the middle of each of the sides so then you can manipulate stretching and pulling to you want this as tight as you can absolutely okay the tax now i have mine like in an old pill bottle but you can buy tax and they will come with one of these little removers however i like what is called a core jack kit where it comes with a bunch of these tacks. These are the tacks, they're flat on the top, but it comes with this and it comes with this. I will link it down below, Amazon has it. I'm gonna show you the purpose of it. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to put a tack in the middle on each side just to get it down on the canvas. What's nice about this, the cord jack kit, and I'm sorry if this is shaking, it's magnetic. So what you do, see how it's stuck on there? You wanna pick up a tack with it. That one's a little bit crooked, but I'm still gonna use it. And then all you do is in the center, I'm gonna do one side at a time. You just push it. This is better done on a very, very hard surface so you can really press down. But you can also, as you're working, and let's say the canvas gets a little loose, you can undo the tacks and restretch it. There's nothing saying you can't. So remember, I'm going to put one on each in the middle of each side. All I do is pick up a tack, stick it on there. It's easier to have the side that I'm tacking that's working right ne down here next to me because I can hold the table. Usually I do this out there with my, um, on my crafting table, the big pink mat. Okay, now that you have a tack in all four sides, it's now time to start tacking it down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to do this side. Some people will put a tack here, a tack here, a tack here, a tack here, and constantly be stretching it. I don't do that. I just do one side at a time and I've never had a problem. Because like I said, you can always pull the tacks out and adjust it. Now, there's also debate about how far apart to put the tacks. Put them as far apart as you want. I usually will do an inch, roughly. I eyeball it. I don't, I'm not like anal about making sure. Um, what I do like to do though, is I like to pull this as tight as I can 
before I put the tack down. Because like I said, you want this as tight. Now I will do this side and then I will do this side. You want it as tight in the middle. So it's almost like putting something into a Q-snap fabric, cross-stitch fabric. You want it as tight as you can. And all I do when I'm done this side, I just go to this side and then I'll do the other two sides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stop talking and I'm still gonna film it, but I'm gonna speed it up. That way you guys aren't sitting here watching me put all of the tacks in at real time. One thing I did want to say is now that I'm moving to this side, and some of these aren't even flat women, let me see if I can bear with me for one second. You really want the tacks as flat as you can get them. And I am actually working on like an angled laptop table kind of thing where if I press too hard, it will move. What I will do on this side now, I'm gonna do this side, is I will remove this tack and then pull this as tight as I can and put the tack down again. And this is where the other part of the core jack kit comes in because let's say you finish the kit and you have to get it off of the frame. See this little lip here? All you do is put it underneath. You kind of work it underneath the tack and push up and it will pull the tack out of the canvas. See how it pulled it out? The core jack kit is worth it. It's like 15 bucks, 20 bucks. It's completely worth it. So I'm actually gonna get another tack because that one's kind of crooked. If your tacks are crooked, they won't go in the best way they can. This one's perfectly straight. Okay, I'm gonna pull this as tight as I can pull it. Whoops, see, see it moved because I'm on this weird table. I'm gonna pull it as tight as I can and then put the tack again in the center. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna stop talking, speed this up. You're gonna see me put all the tacks on this side. And the reason why you put mono canvas on stretcher bars is because as you needle point and pull with the stitches, you can wind up distorting the canvas. And if you don't have it tight as it can be on stretcher bars, it will warp the canvas where then you won't be able to block it and frame it, which we don't want that. Okay, so shutting up now so I can put the tacks in this side. Okay, all the tacks are now in. And what I usually will do now is look at the pattern. First off, 
I picked this cool gingy needle minder. Hee <laughs> hee. I will look at the pattern and figure out where I need to start. Usually I like to start in the top left corner just because that's how I like to start. Some people will start in the middle for a needle point or counted canvas pattern. I'm actually going to start with this square. So I'm gonna start in the top left. Now, if you look at the first page of, the, of this pattern, she starts in the center of the square because each square is four sections, this, 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 and this. So I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna actually start the opposite. I'm gonna start with the outside square. So I need to look through the pattern. If you look, I'm gonna show you the first page. See how she has center, round two, round three, round four. I need to find round four because that is where I am starting. So I'm gonna show you this first square just so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So this pattern right here is this in the center, is this whole thing. If you go to the next page, it shows you the whole rest of it. This is the whole rest of the thing. So I'm gonna be starting right here. So I would be stitching this. You just have to really, really read your pattern carefully to make sure you know where you are starting. So because the canvas is, the design size is eight by eight and the canvas size is 12 by 12, I have two inches border on every side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my, this is a stitch starter that I got from Blue Ribbon Designs on Etsy. I'll see if she still sells them. If she does, I'll link them down below. And I will put this in the corner See where the two is? If you look, it has, this is one inch, two inch, three inch. Since I wanna start two inches in, I need to put it at the corner of my canvas where it says the two. And that right there is where I need to start my first stitch. So I'm going to actually use size 22 needles. I'm just gonna put my needle in the canvas right there because I'm not going to do a stitch right yet. But I wanted to show you the thimble pads also, how they will save your fingers. I don't know why the, the stuff on, I can't even use this, reuse this because the way that they put the sticker on it, I had to tear it. Okay. Now, Tapestry needles size 20 and 22 you definitely need because you're going to be threading and I probably may even use a 20 because the eye of it is much bigger. You're going to be threading thick, thicker threads than floss. So you need to be able to do it without like stressing yourself out. All right, I'm gonna put my needle right there because that is where I'm going to be starting when I do my first stitch. Okay, let's put the needle minder on there. And I usually will put the page of the pattern that I'm working on, like on a clipboard or something, just so it's near me. I need to figure out some, I need a needle book or something because that's not gonna work. But the thimble pads, so what I will do before I start stitching. These are very soft leather. I will take one, put it on the pad of my thumb, and then take another and put it on my first finger. Only because when I pull the needle through, this is what I'm pulling it with. These will save your life. These will save your fingers for sure and your wrist and arm from not hurting so much from pulling 
uh, the needle through the canvas because this is mono canvas. It's very rough. You can hear it. It is not easy to just with your fingers pull these through. And when you do this, if you work on this for hours, your fingers are going to hurt. So when you're done, you can pull it off. It is very sticky. Put it back on the pad and I can use them usually two or three times before I have to go to the different ones, go to another set of pads. I'll link them down below. I got these from Amazon, but then I also found these from Amazon, the polka dots, which are, they feel like silicone, but they're the same concept as those. So I'll link those two and you know what, guess what? Ha ha. We're going to put those right in there. Actually, what I should do is put the needles in here. Also, I'm just going to take this out right here. And we're going to put the needles right in there because that was so stupid of them to put the sticker where they put it. I'm trying to get the staple out of this. Why does everything have to be a pain? The staple's not coming out. Not a big deal. We're just going to set that in there just like that. This will be my own little sewing case. How about that? Oh, and what I'm also going to put in there is a needle threader. I highly recommend that you get one of these. It doesn't have to be this one, but what I like about this one, it's double sided because sometimes you will be working with thinner threads like Krynic or Rainbow Gallery Petite Treasure Braid. And all you're doing is looping the thread around here and pulling it through your needle. But then there's a small one, so that can go in there as well. And that's it. I mean, that's how I just kit it up. And then I start stitching. And once you start stitching and get like your first row in, your couple stitches in, it just takes time. It just takes time to learn how to do this. It's not hard. It's counting. It's making sure you're counting correctly. That is the biggest thing. So I hope this was somewhat informative. When I will do a stitch with me in the future with this for sure, because I really do want to start working on it right away. So as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video.